Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to map down morphological characteristics on your phylogenetic tree. Also, I'm going to teach you how to use PowerPoint to make a nice figure, which is required for your CPR3 assignment. When you map down the characteristics onto your phylogenetic tree, you need to keep several things in your mind. First, you need to work on one character at a time. Second, when you map down the characteristics, you need to map that in the most parsimonious way. Because the computer programs make this tree based on parsimony, it's supposed to show the least changes. The last thing you want to keep in mind is that we actually want to review the whole picture, so um, the actual mapping probably show slightly more changes than the computer program provided, which is fine. I will show you why that's the case. Let's get started. Let me add a new slide as my chalkboard. I will paste in both the dataset and the phylogenetic tree to show you how to map down the changes. Now we have both data set and the phylogenetic tree. So we're going to start from the margin, the first characteristics. Let's take a look. We have two states for margin, non-lobed and lobed. Phagus grandifolia and Quercus nigra are the two species that have non-lobed margin. So in the most parsimonious way, we might put non-lobed here, and then it applies to all the rest of the species. Or we can put right here, which only applies to the figures. So for now, I'm going to put right here. I'll put down a mark, and I put down non-lobed. It's really hard to write with a mouth. So I put a short version. And as we know, except Nigra, all the other oak species have lobed margin. So in the most parsimonious way, I probably want to put lobed here. And then it applies to all the rest of the descendant species. And then in order to make Nigra has the non-lobed margin, I want to mark non-lobed just at the branch lead to the Quercus nigra. So you can see for margin, there are total three changes. Now let's take a look at the lower leaf surfaces. There are three categories for this treat, glabrous, pubescent, and axillary vein tufted. So notice for Phagus grandifolia and Quercus alba, they both have glabrous lower surface. And then the Rura and Nigra have the accelerated vein tufted surface. And then the Volutina and the Stellata have the pubescent lower surface. So in most parsimonious way, I will put pubescent right here. And because the phagus has glabrous lower surface, I will put glabrous right here. And it will apply to the phagus and also applies to all these species. It will not apply to the Volutina and Slada because uh, they share the synapomorphy of pubescent. Now let's take a look at the axillary vein tufted. We could put it here, and then it applies to Nigra, Alba, and Rubra. Then we only need to put down glabrous at the branch lead to Alba. Now this will be a good story. But there is another way to map down the changes. I can put axillary vein tufted 
just at the branch of Nigra and Rubra, just like this. It gives us the same results and the same lens. And based on the data in hand, we don't know which possibility is better. Now let's look at sinus. Figus grandfolia and Quercus nigra both have non-lobed margin, so they don't have any sinus. And then Rubra is the only species has a shallow sinus. And then Alba, Balutina, and Salata, they all have deep sinus. So how can we map this down? I can always start with um, the root. So I will put no sinus at the root. So it applies to Fagus. Then I will add deep sinus right here because you can see uh, there's three species all have deep sinus. So now you can see deep sinus applied to the Valutina, Stellata, and then can go here all the way down applied to Alba. And then for the Rubra, I will just put down shallow sinus here. And then for the Nigra, I'll just put down non or no sinus. Great. Now let's do the acorn size. Uh, we can see there are only two species have a relatively large acorn, which are Alba and the Rubra. Let's see where are they on the tree. Um, it's right here. Cool. Actually, they are in the same clade, which means they share the most common uh, recent common ancestors. So I'm going to put large, uh, or just put larger than one inch here. And then for the rest of the species, they all have the small acorn. The acorn size is smaller or equal to one inch. Also, I just put the root right here. So I'm done. I mapped out all the changes. Let's count how many changes on this tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 13. If you remember, the file-up reports that um, both our most parsimonious tree actually is 9 steps long. There are 9 changes. So how come we have 13? Because computer programs normally ignore the changes on the root. Right? So if you count the changes within the outgroup, there are only 9 changes. Okay, so that's what I said. If it's slightly more, that's okay because we want to show uh, the different changes among all these states. Okay, the last part, I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint to make a nice figure, which you will make for your CPR3 assignment. This is very simple and easy, save you a lot of time. To do that, first add in a new blank slide and then paste your phylogenetic tree onto the slide. So make that fit in nicely. And then you can just add in all these changes. To do that, first choose lines and connectors here, and then choose a line. And just draw a line. And then you can make the line thicker. Move the line to where you want to place it. And then add in a text box. So you can put in the states into the text box and then rotate it. Move the text box next to the little bar there and then group them to make them as one unit, now you're done. So all you need to do next is just copy and paste this unit to different places and then change the state. 
I'm going to fast forward these procedures and to shorten the time. Now we're done. It looks pretty nice, huh? So when you work on your data sets, which should have more species and more traits, you can use smaller font and make some adjustment. It should work pretty well. And then we just need to copy and paste this slide into a Word file and then insert the caption. In real scientific writing, the publishable figure always have a caption underneath and the caption should provide sufficient information about the figure now you will have a very nice figure i believe this is not only useful in bio 155 but also in many other courses Thanks for watching.